Alongside the beautiful coastline of California, archaeologists discovered the sprawling desert. But everyone got surprised when they found something huge and mysterious in the sand. As the team dug deeper, it became clear that it was something from the ancient era and truly majestic. What is it? Hello and welcome back to The Abandoned Archaeologist, the channel to learn all about ancient archaeological findings. Today, we will discuss the discovery of a massive sphinx head in the sprawling sands of California. This sheds light on the history of ancient Egypt. Here we get into the video. For nearly 90 years, the dunes have kept a massive cache of Egyptian relics hidden. Though the bounty includes grand sphinx statues and gold coins, don't expect to find any mummies. All of the items were part of Cecil B. DeMille's The Ten Commandments set, filmed and buried on site in 1923. You heard it right. Archaeologists digging in the dunes of Santa Barbara County, California, recently discovered a miraculous find, an intact 300-pound sphinx head. You might be wondering what a 300-pound sphinx head was doing on the west coast of the United States. According to Laura Gegel of Life Science, the relic in question came from the set of the Ten Commandments, Cecil B. DeMille's groundbreaking 1923 Hollywood blockbuster. DeMille, a towering figure of Hollywood's golden age, set out in the 1920s to create an epic retelling of the biblical story of Moses. To replicate Egypt's sandy landscape, a portion of the silent black-and-white film was shot in the Guadalupe Nipomo dunes. DeMille commissioned an enormous set, stretched 12 stories high and 800 feet wide. This massive structure, which was from one of the largest movie sets ever built at the time, included a colossal gate, pharaoh statues, and 21 plaster of Paris sphinxes. According to Quartz's Eric Olson, the set required 1,300 craftsmen, 25,000 pounds of nails, and 250 tons of plaster. However, after the filming was completed, DeMille ordered that his creation be buried within the dunes for unknown reasons. According to Doug Jansen, executive director of the Dunes Center, the director may need more money left in his budget to dismantle and relocate the set. It's also possible that DeMille, who Olsen described as a control freak known to fret over the smallest details, didn't want his set to be reused by another director in the future. Whatever the case, the Ten Commandments set was buried beneath the sand for nearly a century. In the 1980s, filmmaker Peter Brosnan set out to find the Hollywood relic but ran into a roadblock. The Guadalupe Nipomo dunes are a protected area, and it took decades of wrangling for Santa Barbara County to allow him to excavate. Finally, Brosnan's team discovered a sphinx that once adored the film set in 2012. When archaeologists attempted to remove the relic from the ground, it crumbled. When archaeologists from the Dune Center returned to the site in early November, they were looking for the rest of a sphinx body left over from the previous dig. Instead, according to the press release, the team was shocked to discover a second sphinx head. This time, archaeologists extracted the sphinx with a foam spray that strengthened the object's interior. While the Sphinx was fragile, it was in relatively good condition. Extremely intense paints used to make it stand out in black and white were still visible to archaeologists. The dunes shift a few feet yearly, occasionally exposing Sphinx or feral fragments. A few of the items discovered have been displayed at the Guadalupe and Dipoma Dunes Visitor Center, including costume pieces and a bottle of cough syrup popular during Prohibition. Although Demille's Sphinx is not an authentic Egyptian artifact, Jansen believes it is still historically significant. Movie sets from that golden age of Hollywood just don't exist anymore. This is a chance to save a piece of American history before it's destroyed. The set has deteriorated over time, and the Dune Center is attempting to raise additional funds to conduct excavation work. Once restored, the Sphinx head will be displayed at Guadalupe's Dune Center Museum. Though DeMille buried all traces of his 1923 blockbuster, the story of Exodus remained with him. In 1956, the director decided to remake The Ten Commandments as a four-hour Technicolor epic this time with a larger budget and a grander set. History of Dunes The dunes were just one place where creative people could be found. During the Great Depression, just a decade after the Egyptian cinematic city was buried, the dunes became home to the Dunites, a group of mystics, nudists, artists, writers, and hermits. They were naturalists who gathered all of their basic needs from their surroundings. They dug wells for fresh water, dried cow dung for fuel, and planted small gardens for dune herbs. The Pismoclam, Tivella stultorum, was their staple food. These specimens are well known throughout the seafood industry for their unusually large size and delicious flavor. One only needed to plant a firm heel in the sand and spin a quarter turn or two until they felt the mollusk's firm lips. A single hand could then scoop out the shallowly buried bivalve from the muck. 
10, 15, or 20 of these surprisingly succulent sand dwellers could be collected in an hour or two. This was referred to as dancing for clams by the Dunites. This method was a highly effective way to collect clams while evading the local game warden, the only government agency with real power in the dunes during the Dunite era. When you're waist deep in foamy surf, it's difficult to notice someone dancing for clams. Many Dunites were known and often despised for their cunning trading, stealing quality supplies from local farmers using the sweet smell of pismo clam. This was one of the many reasons why the locals despised the Dunites. Shopkeepers in Oceano had only a sliver of faith in the beachgoers, assuming they were constructing some amoral, nudist, free-love communes out where the feds couldn't find them. Only one person from outside the Dunite community showed genuine compassion for their plight, Dr. Rudolf Gerber, who provided many free services to those affected by the Great Depression. In any case, the Dunites didn't need a savior. They dealt with their problems of poverty through collective efforts. But before we move ahead, we have a question you can answer at the end of the video. What is the significance of Guadalupe? So write down your answer in the comment section and see if you got it right by the end of the video. Moving on, the community survived by sharing knowledge and supplies such as gardening tips, building assistance, and fishing equipment. Such practices ensured that all Dunites had access to the bare necessities of dune living. Communal tools also encouraged Dunites to gather food and eat together. Feasts were common in Dunite culture and provided opportunities for open intellectual debate some referred to as the Dune Fire. The Dune Fire was so significant to the Dunites that they attempted to establish a permanent location for these discussions in 1931. In the shadow of La Grand Pavillon, a community house with a kitchen and two guest bedrooms was built. Another guest house and a personal home were built for Dunite Gavin Arthur, who envisioned this location as the center of a new city of artists and intellectuals. The Dunites saw the area as a source of creative energy and named their tiny utopia Moy Mel which translates to Pastures of Honey in Ancient Gaelic. Gavin and the Dunites began publishing their own intellectual magazine, Dune Forum, to fund their utopia. They subsisted on pismo clams and lived rent-free in the driftwood shacks and makeshift shelters where they wrote books and poetry and published the Dune Forum. Despite being regarded by the locals as far out and weird, the Dunites maintained relationships with some of the greatest artists of their time. The Dune Forum featured contributions from photographers such as Ansel Adams and ties to avant-garde musician John Cage. Gavin Arthur, the grandson of U.S. President Chester A. Arthur and a well-known astrologer and gay rights activist, led the Dunite movement for a time. However, the group disbanded in the 1940s and their existence was almost forgotten until historian Norm Hammond documented their existence in his 1992 book, The Dunites. What do you think about the history of the dunes and the ancient discovery of Sphinx in California? Let us know in the comments below. And the answer to the question we've asked is Guadalupe is known as the gateway to the dunes and home to the dunites. Stay tuned for more updates.